Well, today it's day 14, and today on the show we set up infrastructure that we're going to use for all of our RESTful endpoints. Now, if you have an existing RESTful endpoint service that you want to play with, you can skip all of today's show, because today's really is about setting up a mock endpoint that we can use for testing our gets, puts, and posts that just uses an in-memory database. But even if you have your own RESTful endpoint, today is probably worth hanging out just to see how you integrate a third-party library with the Angular CLI. So, worth it just for that, and it's going to be fun. Now I know you're itching to get started on our HTTP RESTful operations, so let's just get our infrastructure in place before we embark on that by getting our in-memory RESTful endpoint happening so you don't need any special servers or any of that kind of stuff. So the first thing we're going to do is going to install this NPM, Angular 2 in-memory web API. Now I've specified this as 0017 because I know that version works with RC. Five, and I know that in the current version, which I think is 19 or something, is tagged to RC6. Now, I don't want to roll everything forward just yet because that's not officially released. So we're just going to track with this one. Okay, so with NPM installed, our Angular 2 in-memory web API, we should find now, if I open up my packages here, I've done a minus minus save. So here it is. It's in my package.json. And if I open my node modules, I'll see, oh, in fact, there it is there, the Angular 2 in-memory web API, along with the JavaScript that we need and all that other good stuff. Now, having it node modules, even in and package.json, doesn't mean it's all going to get bundled to our disk directory. So we need to make some build changes for that to happen. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up a file we haven't opened before, which is our Angular CLI build.js. So this specifies the actual NPM files that you want to grab out of that node modules directory that you want to end up in dist. So I'm going to add a new one for this. You'll see there's a lots of wildcards here that let you glob those files to particular ones that you're interested in. Now, the one I'm interested in is Angular 2 in memory web API, and I'm just going to glob, I know it's in the root directory, so I'm going to glob it to the JS and the JS.map file. I don't actually think there's a map file there. These files are generated that let you map to the original TypeScript, but I don't think that's there. So we'll put it there anyway. And once I've added to there, I should actually be able to do a build. So if I do an ng build and let that build fire off, we should find that that module is then copied out of this vendor npm files and ends up into dist. In fact, that looks like it is there now. So that has been copied across and is living there. So we now have it in our dist directory. But having our dist directory is only kind of part of the problem. So the next part of the problem is we need a way to tell Angular how to find it in that dist directory and make sure our system.js loader knows how to load those JavaScript files when we reference them in backing components. So what we'll do next is we'll update our system config. In fact, actually, that's the dist one. And I've made this problem before. It is in dist and of course no changes go anywhere. So let's have a look at our system config TypeScript. Now down the bottom of your system config, this is the thing that's configuring all the module loading and whatnot. Now all this stuff is really don't mess with it part of the CLI. So when we actually create components, you'll see that the CLI has been editing these barrels to load the components that we've been creating. So all of our changes need to live in this top user configuration section. Now in this map, I'm going to add two entries. The first one is just going to map the imports that I'm going to type um, through to where they're going to actually end up for the JavaScript file. And then I need in this package to say, well, how, what file in that JavaScript file do I need to reference when I import this? Now we have a root level. You don't sort of know the details of this, but I've had a poke around this in-memory API and it has got an index.js, which is its entry point. So these two entries here allow us to now import this API in our actual um, component scripts. So let's do that now. Let's go to our app module. I'm going to save that. Save you. And then I'm going to go to our actual module. So in our app, our app module, I'm going to now start importing that database and start configuring it. So there's a few things that you'll need to do. First of all, we'll need to import it. So I'm going to import this in-memory web API module, which is this guy here, which is our bootstrap module for setting up this in-memory RESTful API. 
And then I'm going to need some kind of service of my own that bootstraps the reference data that we want to be plugged in to this service when it sparks. So if you like, this is like the canned reference tables that are gonna be in this RESTful endpoint when it sparks up. And we'll create this mock database service in a sec. Um, in fact, why don't we just do that now? Let's create a new file and we're gonna call this mock.database.service.ts. Now the way that the mock database service works is it sets up a class that implements in-memory DB service. And in-memory DB service doesn't really do all that much. In fact, its interface only has one uh, method, which is this create DB, which is where you should spark up your actual uh, RESTful data that you want to expose over the API. So I'm going to do that now. I'm just going to set up a couple of things. So we're going to need a friends endpoint where we can access our friends. So this is some endpoint like slash API slash friends, and that's going to return our list of friends. And then we also want like a slash API slash tweets is going to return our list of tweets. Now, one little change I've made here is I've added an ID field to our tweet. I don't know if we had that before. Uh, if we didn't, let's make one now public uh, ID, which is type number. So the way the API works is it, you can do a post to an endpoint. And if it's a new object, which is what it's designed for, it will create a new uh, element in that collection and increment the ID number. Or if you have an existing object, you can actually update it using a RESTful endpoint like slash API slash tweets slash three, and that will update tweet number three. So I've enhanced the tweets collection, which used to just be uh, a bunch of tweet objects which didn't have any IDs, just to simply have this ID as well. So we've got our IDs there. We've incorporated our mock database service. Uh, in fact, we still need to do one more thing. So we've defined our two collections. What create to be what wants you to return is uh, actually a, a map where you have the key here to be the name of the endpoint. So for instance, slash API slash tweets, and then this to be a collection, an ID level collection if you want to do inserts or just a standard type of object if you don't care about that. That's going to be returned when the API is invoked from the client. So you hit slash API slash tweets. This is the collection you're going to get back. You hit slash API slash friends. This is the collection you're going to get back. And that's just the mechanism it uses to let you determine which collections you want to expose over the API and what mock values you want in them. Okay, so that's our mock database create DB. These are our two collections we're exposing. The last bit we really need to sort out is how do we tell Angular about this endpoint and about our mock database service. And to do that, we're going to have to enhance our module one more time where we are going to have to change our imports. So let's just grab our imports here. And we are going to put inside here the bootstrap call that you need to tell Angular about this in-memory database. So there's a bunch of configuration data here. This is simply a pointer to our mock database service we're just looking at. Uh, which provides our create routine. And there's a few different configuration items that you can optionally provide. I've provided two here. One is delay, which is how long the actual API is gonna to take to run. So we're gonna make this a little longer later on so we can see it you know, simulating a real slow API that's happening over the web. Or we can, we can also specify the root path. In my case, it's gonna be slash API. And then after this will come your various collections. So slash API slash tweets and slash API slash friends. So with all of that in place, we are now in a position to spark up a serve, ng serve or ngs if you like. Uh, and now we should be able to compile our object here. So that's now compiling happily. Now we haven't actually implemented any of our fetches and whatnot yet. So you might be tempted to say, well, I would love now to just go into slash API slash API slash uh, tweets, for instance, and say, get me that list of tweets. And if you do that, you'll find that the return you get on your console is, is that it has failed to map uh, any of these routes. And that's because the way this in-memory mechanism works isn't based around creating routes and routing from the browser here. It's based by intercepting the actual HTTP call. So they never actually go on the wire. So if you did want to have a browser, how uh, to make sure this was actually loading properly, you can, as a minimum, check out your sources tab in your 
browser tools and you can see that the Angular 2 in memory web API is here and running. And in fact, if you had a browse through there, you can see how it's bootstrapping. And in fact, in this one here, all the different methods like delete, create, put, post are all in here and you can breakpoint them if you need to debug it. But we're going to come back to that next episode when we actually start calling these APIs and then we're going to really have some fun. So join us then.